Welcome back to another amazing episode of Shenanigans. Not the Shenanigans. It is just Shenanigans, even though our logo says different. There you go, Angela. You feel better now? Sure. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I should turn off my bleeper. Hold on. Is that your seven second delay? So that in case you say something really offensive, your computer knows to block it out? I'm trying to remember to turn that off. Let's be honest. If Logan needed uh, something like that, like a seven second delay, it would need to be much longer than seven seconds to. <laughs> we record shenanigans. It's got like a twenty minute I, blank space. I can go, go on tirades. Yeah, we should probably cut that out too. Yeah. Note to self. I usually crop the intro if we're goofing off. So every episode, then not to leave everything. I hope. Yeah. Why well, not? So every episode, leave some stuff in. No, I don't. You leave the fun stuff in. You leave take the crappy stuff out. It's called editing. <laughs> You leave the good stuff in, you take the crappy out, you leave the good stuff in, and you shake it all about. No! We have to be in chronological shaking. order, Heather! <laughs> shaking it about. Oh, man. That's a terrible idea. Editing is not an etch sketch, Heather. <laughs> Let's just see what the plot is if we just shuffle it. No, I like this. I like this improvisational editing. Last time on the shenanigans. You just said we weren't the. <laughs> I know. Last time You're on shenanigans. Doing it. I'll um, do two takes, one each way, and then you just you can just do whichever one you want. Say it more official the the, the missing, because you just sort of half assed the second one. <laughs> we need to have an animated logo where the the falls off of our logo now. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> okay, so last time on Shenanigans. We need Angela we... to come in angrily and hit it with a hammer. I got cut off. No. We... <laughs> or, or Arthur come in and like miss it like six or seven times and then just kind of give up in frustration. <laughs> and then Angela yeah. comes in and just blows on it and it just falls over. Yeah. And at the end of the episode, Merrick goes in and puts it back up. <laughs> Some duct tape. So... We can probably get a season out of this. Nickelodeon will pick this up. Just a fight about a logo. It's not actually any other content. It's just the characters debating the grammatical nature of our title. You probably have to go on Nick at night, probably. Maybe Adult Swim, because it sounds like you need some pot to really enjoy this content. <laughs> so, like, everything yeah, we produce. Then. Right. Too many cooks. <laughs> Too many cooks. Okay. Too many cookies. Way too many So Heather, cookies. were you starting it or were you just giving us a, I was, a title No, card? I was I was trying. <laughs> Go ahead, Heather. I got cut off. Are you talking about the oil again? Um, <laughs> no. God damn it, Logan. <laughs> no, that's not that was a, anyway. That was a long episode, wasn't it? Oh shit. Sorry. If we're talking about cutting off, we're talking about Adelaide's uh, jacket. It got oh, fixed her poor apparently. jacket. <laughs> yes, Bonnie has mending. She fixed it. It did it. Um. Okay. So last time on Shenanigans, Ashport, a city on the brink. The winds of the restless sea are thick with the soot and grime of progress. The continent of Valdara is a land of adventure and magic. And while it is dragged through the smoke and into the light of a modern age, the Birchfield Institute and its operatives, the Proctors, lead the charge. So close to the end of our quest in the Underdark, we slowly and silently made our way through the Wailing Cairns, which we discovered were wailing because of an infestation of some manner of small, glowing, singing insects. Swarms of them filled the pitch-dark caverns with three unsettling octaves of buzzing. We spent the next several hours attempting to stealth our way past each bug nest. We were almost detected a few times and were a bit louder than we meant to be, but we managed to reach the end merely exhausted and a tad beaten up by our flying bug ordeal. Eat up. What? Beat up. <laughs> really, Bonnie? I'm sorry, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Near the end of the cairns, we were safe for the moment, so we set up camp and a bonfire for some desperately needed rest. 
Unfortunately, the boys woke up still suffering a bit with exhaustion. As we were getting ready to continue our journey, we heard and then saw someone racing towards us from the darkness ahead. Another proctor, a cleric, who could only be relieved to see us for an instant before an unseen attacker got him in the back with an arrow. One hit kill. The poison tip probably did him in first, though. Bonnie doused our firelight, and now we're waiting in the dark, hoping that whoever's out there didn't get a good enough look to see us. All right. So, um, dead priest at your feet. Uh, yes. So I, I know we can't see him, but Val's gonna try to do spare the dying. I thought they were like thirty feet away. I didn't no, he, realize they were. He came, he came pretty much out of the darkness, or pretty darn close to it, when he was struck. Okay. Well, I um, grave domain spare the dying. It's a bonus action cantrip. And I can cast it up to 60 feet away. So she's going to cast Spare the Dying on him. It fails. Okay. Well, she tried. Um, Adelaide has a um, an arrow immediately in her, in her bow and um, says to everybody else sort of low, the moment I see one, I can find it later. Draw them out. There is no light at the end of this tunnel. As a matter of fact, somehow this next portion is darker. Arthur is going to cast Silent Image. All right. And he's going to create an image of the downed cleric. Um, All right. Getting up and kind of crawling away. As you uh, as you create this image of this cleric getting up and kind of moving away, two more arrows come streaking from the darkness, uh, and obviously just go through the image and kind of just clack clack clack, clack and skitter across the the smooth stone floor here. What direction can we see at all? What direction the arrows come from? Those of us with dark vision, they're coming basically straight out, but you don't know how far. Oh, they're out of ammo now. That's good. We should move quietly away, if possible. Agreed. You mean back the way we came? All right, that's the way we're going. No, I meant like just even up against the back of the cave wall there, because we're in a little outcropping up against it. Hopefully they'll continue straight and not come this way. Merrick attempts to do so silently. Okay, so you guys, to describe this a little bit better, again, you guys are in a very large volume of this cavern, the, the Wailing Cairns, which has a huge wall that you guys are up against, um, a rocky sort of wall that starts to go up and cover every, there's a few little nooks and crannies that you can kind of tuck back behind. Uh, you can't see the side walls here still. Um, but you can kind of see how it kind of starts to curve slightly as it gets to the edge of your 60 foot dark vision. And it's very, very tall here. We In had, the wall you're facing, what, yes? We had found a little alcove and camped out in it. Yes, I just said that was the nook thing. There are little alcoves here and there, the kind of rocky croppings where you could kind of hide, oh, but they're not okay. very big. You just kind of got tucked back to where you didn't think you were going to see any insects or anything. doesn't mean you're not still in this section. Uh, and then what you're basically looking at is a gigantic crack in the wall. Uh, and that is where they were running out of. You have no clear understanding of how large the cavern or caves are up in front of you. But you're going to assume they're fairly large if somebody is arcing arrows from a distance. The thing that really gets you... Anybody you, uh, proficient with a bow? Some people... But neither of us can see. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, well, you but you guys had some light initially. That's how you saw them coming, right? Yeah. So the arrows that are coming out of the darkness are arcing in such a way that you're going to guess they're probably a hundred or more feet away. So they're able to see that distance, or maybe your light uh, initially 
uh, would well that maybe if your first first thought may have been that the light may have like lit this guy up and then they shot at the light and got lucky except that after you douse the light and Arthur does that they obviously see the illusion and shoot it at his again. Great. Fuck. Really wish I had asked the Birchfield for some like I don't know dark vision or a giant fucking shield. I have. Well, actually, no. I don't have a shield. I forgot. I switched up weapons. So, Bonnie's still going to try and hide. Yes. While okay. keeping an eye out, because at least she can kind of see. Um. Uh, yeah, so how long do you guys wait? At least until if there's any noise about them, like, wanting to try to come and reclaim the body. Yeah. Because I can't see, so I'd be focusing on my hearing. See if there's any noise of like things coming closer or sure. approaching from the mouth of that cave opening. Doesn't appear to be any noise. And Arthur would um, whisper to you guys that I can cast silent image at will. So whenever we want to check to see if there's anybody still there. Sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, maybe we should uh, have you cast some sort of creature that doesn't look like us like another humanoid but not one of us walking away from somewhere a little bit away is how far can you cast the spell 60 feet just let me know when can you cast without seeing what you're casting at my question is is whether or not your image is going to appear floating four inches off the ground that's true you can't see it all so you're not going to be able to necess- well from far enough away they may not realize it's off the ground that's a valid point. Why don't you make something that floats? We did fight. We did fight a uh, pretty nasty floaty thing before. Like the estate. Oh, that floaty squid thing. Yeah. Ooh, good plan. All right. I'm not a fan of that thing. Ruined Ruined your my sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. Well, this one <laughs> won't have smell o vision, so it should be fine. <laughs> All right, then. Let me know when. Uh, go for it. All right. And Logan, I create the creature that was in the first house that we invaded that came out of the dumbwaiter. The first house. I think it's the only house we invaded. And I have it just kind of float out there. All right. So you create a, a little uh, a little squid-like sort of creature that starts floating around um, in front of the cave. What is, um, uh, how long does that last? Ten minutes. So it kind of you just have it float back and forth in front of the uh, the cave there. Um, nothing seems to happen. All right, it, and I can cast it at will, so I can do another ten minutes if needed. Okay, right. I do so. Okay, no, nothing. Nothing happens. Okay, I really want to go check that body. Yeah, but that's gonna put us out in the open. Doing anything is going to put us out in the open. We have to leave at some point. I'm aware, but, you know, it's not super safe. Ugh. There's the rub, isn't it? I could try to use my whip. To, like, latch on to his ankle and tug him? Mm-hmm. Preferably not his neck, although I don't think he's using it anymore. I don't know if he's that close. Um, That's me out of character. Not sure if he's that close to us all right logan i'm gonna get as close as i can and try to um i gotta get within 10 feet of him okay so you uh you go ahead and move up to him and use my whip to try to latch on to his ankle and drag him back give me an attack roll because that's it's the same thing adelaide you've done a lot of research do you know what these creatures might be? I could be able to disguise myself as one of them. I have disguised self. I mean, we're, what, we're underground. We're, it's an arrow. I didn't, not much to go on. I mean, the, I don't know what the Duragar are going to be like, but maybe it's them. Logan, I got a 19. Okay, yeah, you, you Indiana Jones, the crap out of that leg. And so you start to kind of pull it back over, um... To uh, to you guys, um, now you have dark vision, right, Mike? No. Okay, so how are you seeing right now? Did you guys put back light on? A uh, torch. Okay. All right. That's what I've been using. 
Got it. All right. Oh, you, you lit your torch back up? Well, in, in order to do what I did, I needed to see it. So I lit a torch yeah. in order to do it. If you need to go back that's and uh, okay. retcon that, no, then that's fine. go ahead. That's perfect. That's perfect. That's fine. Uh-huh. Everything's just fine as he moves all of the pieces of the things following. <laughs> it's all good. So you pulled the body over to you. Hey, you though. Adelaide immediately wants to check out that arrow. There was a little green liquid coming off of it. Be sure, be careful of that. Uh, Adelaide flashes her gloves out, like, I have, I'll be careful. And then, yeah, I want to I wanna inspect that arrow and find out what's going on with it. And Merrick's going for the coin purse. <laughs> Arthur looks at what color um, the badge is, to see if it's like ours or better metal. Uh, it is a, uh, a silver badge. Um, also a silver uh, holy symbol to uh, Ursali. So yeah, so the black fletching um, on this uh, kind of a dark wood uh, shaft uh, looks very, very highly, uh, finely crafted. Give me knowledge history, whoever's inspecting that, the arrow. Okay. I'm proficient and I can assist. Sure. Merrick, you get there and you realize there's no money pouch, but it has a backpack and a bunch of other equipment. Once uh, they get the arrow in a place where it's not going to interfere, I'll, I'll take a look at the pack, see if there's anything useful. Okay. Uh, you uh, get a 19? Yes, I'm sorry. I got... That's okay. So, uh, 19, um, you see hints of, of elven craftsmanship. Um you uh if you didn't know better, you you saw this along, you know, a dozen other arrows, you would swear that elves made this. Hmm. That's unusual. As Adelaide is looking at this this arrow, she's um more and more coming to uh grips with the idea that she knows she's seen this craftsmanship before, this this style of fletching, um and uh and the uh, the way the arrowheads are, are built and and created and and uh, done on. As a matter of fact, uh, you yourself use uh, many of the similar techniques in your own crafting of arrows. She'll she'll tell the others that it, it looks elven crafted. Are there elves underground? Um, Logan, as a as a bard, half elf. Can I make a nature check to see if I've heard of elves that live underground, since I have elven heritage? Yeah. It's entirely possible that this guy did something very specific to upset this group of people, and we are not in danger at all. Maybe. I mean, we're here to take something. That could all be all it took. Not from them. Thirteen? Yeah, you're half aquatic elf. I mean, there's aquatic elves, there's high elves, there's a ladrin, there's all sorts of things. I mean, there there absolutely could be an underground race of elves. Um, and it would make sense. Uh, they would have extremely good uh, sight in the dark, obviously. Um, and um, I believe you guys did learn what the Duergar actually are, didn't you? And you learned that they were underground dwarves? Right, that that wouldn't be the same. So basically they were an offshoot of dwarves, so it, it kind of makes sense that they would exist here too. And we learned, I believe, that they were called dark dwarves too. So maybe it stands to reason that these are dark elves. Yeah. I'm going to try something, if you guys don't mind. Sure, what are you thinking? I'm going to cast Comprehend Languages on myself. I can do it as a ritual, it won't, uh, just in case. And then we saw the dark dwarves. I have disguised self, so I'll turn into a dark elf and see. And then I can walk out. Maybe I'll look like them. I don't think you've seen any dark dwarves. I thought maybe in the pictures we were, because we had heard them called dark dwarves. So we were looking at them up, so maybe you there might was have a seen picture some or something. sketches, but. That's what I meant. How are you going to take that and, tur- and do a dark elf? Turn my skin dark, because. I'm a half elf, so I could take the idea and just basically make my skin tone the same as the sketches or what we've heard read. All right. I don't know that dark dwarves necessarily have dark skin. I'm still going to go ahead and do the ritual for comprehend language. Okay. Because it'll take me 10 minutes. It doesn't actually allow you to speak the language, does it? I can understand the literal meaning of any language that I hear, 
no, it won't let me speak it, but it'll, at least if someone's talking about us, I'll be able to know about it. Still useful, yep. True. That's good. And I can also understand any written language that I see. What about secret languages, like Thieves' Cat or Druidic? Nope, can't decode secret languages. I'm just curious. Sure. <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. Logan. Yes. Um, Adelaide has something in her journal that might help. Okay. Uh, Adelaide, she'll flip ahead to near the front of her journal and offer the page up to Bonnie. And there is a portrait sketch of a dark elf. Try that, maybe? And it's a, it's a, a, a man sort of older with dark skin and reddish eyes and, and dark hair. Um, look at, with like elven ears. That sounds about right. Okay. Um, well, I'll do a, I can't disguise my voice, so I'll do a female version of that if that's okay. Sure. Whatever's easiest for you. Okay. So, uh, okay, so Bonnie, you go ahead and uh, cast uh, cast this illusion to make yourself look like uh, a female version of, of Adelaide's drawings and sketches um, and cast comprehend languages on yourself. Uh, Merrick, you're rifling through and you're pulling out a ton of stuff. He's got a couple of scroll cases and just all sorts of uh, equipment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read it off here, but then I'll post it physically for you guys uh um, also, actually, I won't be able to post all of it because I hand wrote most of it. Uh, but he's got a priest pack, which is going to have a blanket, uh, 10 candles, a tinder box, uh, a block of incense, a sensor, vestments, and uh, he's got five days of rations. So, any of that anybody wants? <laughs> the food. <laughs> yeah, okay. so Definitely take, the food. You guys take five days of rations, figure out who's going to take that. Um, he's got a vial of holy water. I just as soon dip an arrow in that. <laughs> if you want it, Merrick, or not. Sure, I'll take it. Okay. He has a vial of anti venom. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> he has a light crossbow. Looks mundane. I'll take it. Okay. There are 18 bolts, five nuts. That would be you guys. Just ground nuts? Mech. Macadamia, peanut, pecan. Uh, he's got a warhammer. Oh. Uh, he has his silver badge. I'll hold on to that. Yeah, we should take that back to Birchfield. Oh, okay. Uh, he's got a block of incense. Any Anything that's priestly related, Val would probably take, because then she can use it. Okay, so a sensor, vestments. He has a water skin that's about half full. Abe's definitely would have made sure you had water for this next part of the journey. So you guys are good on water for now. But you're not going to let this water go, I would guess. No. Does he have an alms box that no. God can replace hers with? Nope. It's, it's, it's sitting with a bug in it somewhere. Um, so <laughs> They used a similar tactic. Merrick, did you, have, did you have concerns about taking the badge? Oh, I was just going to say that Merrick would have tried to secret that badge away. Since he is the one going through all of the stuff. Oh, well, that's oh. fine. Go for it. Okay. Give me a slide of hand check. You got it. But yeah, Arthur did specifically look for that too, so he knows what color it was and where it, that he had it. Because you were pulling the guy over, so. Is it just a regular warhammer? Yeah. Yeah. Everything's just plain. It's because what this priest seemed to be doing was support. He has two remove poison scrolls. I think I might be the only one that can use those. Anybody can use a scroll in my world. I don't like the idea that, that it has to be on your spell list. Oh, okay. If it's on your spell list, you can you you it's it's a better chance that you're gonna succeed. And if it's an on your spell list and it's a spell level you can cast, you can just cast it. Why don't we split those in case of emergency? <laughs> um there are two remove poison scrolls, two lesser restoration scrolls. Two scrolls of bless. She just hashtag. <laughs> yes. Uh, a scroll of daylight. Oh shit. And four scrolls of dark vision. Oh shit. 
You know, I feel really, really bad about losing a fellow in arms, but fuck yes. You get all those? Uh, yes, I think so. Two remove poison scrolls, two lesser restoration scrolls, two scrolls of bless, a scroll of daylight, and four scrolls of dark vision. Um, Adelaide's also taking that arrow. She'll be keeping that. It did hit, so it's not uh, it's not usable, but you could probably repair it. That's fine. At the very least, I'll be keeping it for evidence, but, um, sure. but yeah, if I can fix it, great. And Val's going to definitely take his vestments and holy symbol and stuff, because she'll want to return that to his church. Okay, great. I'm just going to take his priest pack, because that's basically all the priest stuff. The only thing that would be group would be rations and the water skin. I don't think anyone's going to want any of the rest of it. Unless someone needs a blanket or a tinderbox. I did take the holy water. That's not part of the priest pack. Got it. Logan, we hadn't really discussed the nature of Birchfield's attitude about people dying in the field. Is it sort of a, you did good for the Birchfield, but we're not going to like risk our lives dragging your body home sort of deal? <laughs> Depends on the color of badge. Oh, okay. So, yeah, probably for a silver, probably that's right. Um, although if you have room, like in a bag of holding or something, you don't bring a body back. I mean, there's probably a reward for bringing the bodies back. And the reward uh, varies depending on the the badge color. Man, your insurance rates fluctuate depending on the color of your pen. (laughs) Um, Adelaide, um, would put the stuff away and, um, uh, like shit, uh, Merrick, make sure you grab his badge. Sure. Good. Oh, it looks like it, he already did, yeah. Good. All right. Sure. <laughs> Could I venture to use one of those dark vision scrolls, please? I think it might be a good time for all of you to be able to see in the dark. Yes, please. I agree. How long does that last for? Um... If I'm remembering right, I think the scrolls last about eight hours. All right, then let's still be quick about it. Yeah, at least it would get us through the worst of this. <laughs> Druid, ranger, sorcerer, or wizard. Do we have any of those? Nope. None, huh? Nope, we don't have uh, any of those. We have a, a everything bard, else. <laughs> a cleric, and a warlock. We have the other three. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's going to be a check. Uh, it's a caster level check, so it's uh, it's whatever your caster ability is. So plus three. Me too. Yeah, mine's uh, my check would be a plus two. So we each roll um, to see if we succeed, or because it does it on yourself. Well, do you want to give one person the opportunity to do it really well? I mean, who does it well, or are you just going to try to each do your own? I think Val would offer to work together with Bonnie. Or, Mar- or Arthur, either one, on figuring out the scroll, because it's not a magic we all know. But the scrolls are one and done. It's not a, uh, a ability check. It's a caster level check. Not sure if that counts or not. We'll have to look that up later. But uh, I just think that that's a tough one to aid on. Uh, maybe not, I suppose. Well, what I'm what I'm proposing is that the casters as a whole, because none of us know this spell and none of us technically can cast it, are all looking at it and comparing notes on like, oh yeah, this this looks like this, this makes sense, and that makes sense, and I think this is that. Okay. Something like that. This is pronounced like this. I could inspire you, and then you'd have a d6 to your roll. Something something I'm going to say is that 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 for this case, because all the scrolls were written the same, by the way, every one of the scrolls also has a a seal from the Institute on it as well. Um, they, They brand their scrolls. Of course they do. Of course they do. Uh, the um, <laughs> actually, there's probably a watermark, is what it is. TM. Um, so, uh, so what I'm going to do is the first time anybody makes a check, they're going to need uh, they're going to have to do it blind. It's just going to be a straight roll because you've got to get used to learning how to do it and learn from your failures or your successes. Can I still inspire? Them? Yes, absolutely. So, who's going to do the first check? After, after you guys spend a little time comparing notes and going, okay, we're going to do it like this and like this. Um, so, Arthur, I kind of get it, but how how much do you think you get this spell? Probably a little bit better. Okay, okay. 
then yeah, I think you should have him. I think we should try having him do it. On a scale of one to five, I get it a three. This many. Uh, Bonnie can't inspire herself to do it, so it needs to be you or me. All right. Give it a go. Bonnie will inspire Arthur. The, the D6 inspiration was a one. And okay. the die roll was a 14 plus three. So 17 and then plus one is 18. Very nice. You needed, you needed a 17 because it was off class. It's a plus five oh, to fuck. the difficulty because being off class, you successfully uh, cast the scroll on. Who are you touching? Da, 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 touch me. Mm, who, who, I knew who didn't have it already, right? Yeah. The only people who can see in the dark are Val and Bonnie. Yeah, the rest of you guys can't. I think you would have cast it on yourself first and foremost. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was going to say myself then. Okay. All right. Then everyone looks at you and says, quit touching yourself. And uh, no, you when successfully I cast cast a spell. vision. I touch myself. Uh, so you, uh, so you, you, you pull up the scroll. You guys spend a few minutes comparing notes. You're like, okay, this is kind of like this, kind of like that. You decide, okay, let's just go for it. You go ahead and cast it on yourself, even with everyone kind of helping. Um, inspiring uh, words from Bonnie get uh, get you uh, just over the edge there. Actually, I think you did it without it, but. Um, it was nice, nice to have that affirmation, and you successfully cast the scroll. Uh, having done it once, you feel now that as long as it's a Birchfield Institute scroll of dark vision, you have a feeling you have a good chance of doing it again. So you'll get advantage on any Birchfield Institute scroll as they have kind of a very, they've tried to create a very uh, uh, Walmart feel. You know, it's a tab A, slot B, you know, McDonald's, same way every time type of uh uh, repetition, so anybody can use their scrolls in the field uh, as as they go. That's the idea. So I got no problems with that. If it's somebody else's scroll, you're you're sol. But with the Birchfield scrolls, somehow they're they're they are um, uh, franchising and uh, and uh, <laughs> getting the getting the production line going. So they have like a blue book, like an MLA or or uh, ALA formatting guide about how to write their yeah, scrolls. Yeah, basically. There's- very specific. We're going to use the scroll yeah. template. There's a very specific guideline to how their scrolls are laid out because it's the simplest and easiest way. They're designed for field agents who may get in trouble. So I'm liking right. this. This is fun. Okay. Uh, so you now have advantage on any check to be able to do that in the future. You're still at a DC 17 because it would be a 12 normally plus five for it being across uh, uh, class. Okay. Next scroll will be on Adelaide. I can inspire you again if you'd like. Okay. Is it worth it? I mean, is it does it stress you? Do you have a limited number of uses? Is like what I think he's asking. <laughs> I, I do, but uh, I think that this is a worthy cause for them. Okay. It'd be really nice if Bonnie and I weren't the only ones that could see. Okay, Adelaide, you're next. Sure. Yeah, that one is going to be a twelve, even with even with the inspiration and advantage. Yep. Wow. The writing from that scroll fades away and uh, it does not work. Yes, Adelaide? I still can't see. Oh, really? <laughs> hmm. I did cough in the middle of that one. Let me, that's probably what happened. That could have, that could have done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, let me <clears throat> get, clear my throat here first. Here, here. Get your pepacoa. Some pepacoa, yeah. He's not one of those bad people. Well, that that one. Get your, get your flopacoa. It's Eric Cochra throat lozenge. <laughs> yes. Good job, Eric Kyle. <laughs> I inspired then, you again, so. You yeah, nineteen another. on the the die, oh, okay. and uh, four on the d six. So plus three on my ability. You don't have to use the inspiration if if you see what the die is first. You can okay. choose not to. So if you wanted to save it for your final roll, you could. I'm going to. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Because I also don't have any more inspirations after that. So if you need to cast it again, you might want to hold on to that. So 22. Just use the four use the four on the next roll instead. Or keep it after that because you got it for a minute. Yep. Ten minutes. Oh good. Good. I can shoot things now. Natural twenty on my next roll. 
without the advantage. Merrick just permanently gets dark vision. <laughs> uh, Merrick gets dark vision for 12 hours. Mm-hmm. You, can, you cast that spell super well. I think I'm getting the hang of it. Too bad we're out of scrolls, but good job. Blink, blink. And he also can see at 120. Just throwing that out there. Um, actually, that makes that that actually works better. Why don't you? We'll say that you, yeah, you get one twenty instead of the extra hours, so you you have one twenty dark vision because that actually exists. That is super helpful for someone with range. <laughs> I planned that. I see everything. Oh God, you're so bright. Oh, you're so gray. I see dead people. He's right there. He's, we all do. <laughs> You put out your torch, please. <laughs> yes, Arthur. Um, nixing the torch would probably be better now if we're all on relatively even playing with these these folk. Yes, this gray thing. Yes, I'll put it out. <laughs> and I snuff it. <laughs> oh my god, Arthur! Somebody revive him quick! <laughs> oh. Uh... <laughs> Arthur, we can all see you now. All right, so you guys now can see. <laughs> I can see. I can see, I can see, I can see. I'm in a singing mood today. I don't know why. Sorry, guys. Okay, clearly, you and I should have swapped classes. You could sing everything, and I could just heal. <laughs> it's time to do a charm in trouble. So you you play Bonnie and can sing, and then Tessa will play Val. I'm sure she could pull Grumpy off. Oh, oh now we have we can't do the body switching adventure, Logan. I know that you had planned something. Gosh, like you ruined it. <laughs> Spoiled it. <laughs> so yay, we can all see now. Um, now what do we do? And Bonnie looks like a trout. Merrick will stealth forward to the mouth of the cave. Yeah, 220 foot dark vision. So about 100 feet away, um, you see two of these dark elves, these elven creatures um, sitting on top of a a kind of a rocky outcropping um, and uh, with their bows and they're just kind of waiting and watching the the crevice. Um, Give me a stealth check real quick. You got it. If anyone was going to stick their head out in open targeting space, it should have been Merrick. So. That is a 17. Okay, let me get some rolls here. Um, you guys have been making them wait for a while. So, yeah, they seem to be talking. They don't really seem to notice you. Um, and what you see is is kind of this, this crack that's opened the wall, uh, opens up relatively quickly into a small cavern. Uh, maybe uh, you can see maybe a 40 foot ceiling um, and uh, and about uh, maybe 50 feet wide uh, total and uh, just these large rocky sorts of boulders all along there almost look like they were placed there equidistance on either side um, that's some kind of like entryway into this this portion of the the cave uh, beyond them about another 20 feet you see, uh, you see a, a, a um, uh, kind of an archway. It looks like almost a crafted archway, just barely at the edge of your vision. You really can't make much out, out of it other than that. Okay, and then I will retract my head from inside the the, the mouth of the crevasse. And, um, well, there's two of them. Uh, it's about the range of what I can see. Um, to a large archway behind them. Doesn't look like a lot of places to hide, unfortunately. But there's only two of them, and they seem rather distracted at the moment. That's good. We should try to surprise them. Bonnie. Yes? Um, you said you could you could potentially talk to them. Is that is that what you did? Uh, yeah, I can understand them if they're speaking another language, and hopefully it's just Elvish, and I speak that, and then no problems, but... Uh, I, but at least I'll be able to understand them if I can hear what they're talking about. But that's a one-way thing? It is a one-way. Okay. So how about I stealth in there and be quiet and kind of try to loop around them a bit and then you could walk in like you own the place. You know, confidence is king. So you might not even need to talk. Y- and if you don't speak to them, 
That could be suspicious, but you would understand them enough to be able to follow instructions. It wouldn't be like you're a complete stranger. You'd know That's true. how to respond, at least non-verbally, to them. True. You can communicate a lot with grunts. Or even just like a hand wave. If they're watching <laughs> somebody, waiting for something, they're probably not going to call out to you. Okay. What's a non-verbal symbol for, I lost my voice? You know, making all that noise in the in the caverns that you're not supposed to make noise in. You just sort of blow your, your voice out. Sort of. I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. Me too. All right. Uh, uh, sorry, I just went to a concert. Those bugs, man. Just mosh pit for days on that bug. Those three drones. Fuck. I, I, I think I swallowed a couple. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> A very convincing cough might go a long way to help pull that off if you have to fake that. One fourteenth of a fortnight ago, I want to be sedated. <laughs> Deep cut. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, it took me way too long because I'm like, what song is he singing? Okay, he's not actually. Okay. <laughs> that was... Layers upon layers, as I would come to expect Very from nice. you, Kyle. I applaud you. Expertly done. All right. Um, Venture for it. So, Merrick, you're going to stealth, and I'm going to distract, basically, is the idea? Yep. All right. Is there any way for you guys to signal if we're supposed to come out, or are you just going to come back for us and we wait? Oh, God, oh, God, we're all going to die? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> that, that didn't work well for the last fella. I can press to digitate like a if I have my hand behind my back or something. I could press to digitate like a little a tiny spark or something as an alert to go ahead and go. Uh, if that would work. Yep. Okay. Sure. And, and sure. where are we going in 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 there? Right to surprise them. Okay. How about um, Bonnie? How about red spark if we need to come in for combat, and a blue spark if we can just make our way over and everything's okay. Because we will go faster if we know there's a problem. Can we see colors with dark vision? Probably not. Very. <laughs> I've never had dark vision before, so I didn't know not to know that. Yeah, you, you can't really see colors very well with dark vision. Um, yeah, Just... uh, maybe do one spark for danger and two sparks for all clear. One spark for by land, two sparks by sea. <laughs> One spark for danger, two for all clear. Okay. Any spark is, is danger. Will Robinson. <laughs> and, and Merrick's cue for letting us know that there's danger is that he's being shot at. I'm going to watch for that. Caca. Yes, that's a good that's a good super <laughs> But then that's perfect, then Eves shows up and we are <laughs> <were> rescued. <laughs> So very far from those good old days of safely eating bug crabs, I long for those times. Hello shenanigans, welcome to the super quick mid-break. Thank you all so much for listening to our show. We appreciate every single one of you who tune in or send in your suggestions or review us on iTunes. You folks are amazing. Real quick retconning acknowledgement, our poor late fellow Proctor was wearing a Birchfield Institute pin with a silver emblem of the knowing eye on it. We know that Logan said it was bronze last episode, don't at him. Our bad. Going forward, the dead cleric is and has always been wearing a silver Birchfield pin. Let's call it a trick of the bonfire light. Anyway, exciting things to announce. We have recently brought some fabulous new shows onto the Nerdsmith Network and some amazing creators, so please consider checking them out over on nerdsmith.org slash content. We've got the fine gentlemen of Lawful Stupid, four very cool folks who run a mean game of D&D and put a lot of good out into the world with their Min Max for Mankind charity campaign. Introverts Guild is a Twitch channel hosted by the delightful Victoria. You can watch V illustrate tarot cards and make cool art, play games, and interview fellow artists and nerds about how they tick. We retweet her announcements when she goes live during the week, so keep an eye out for those and check out her channel for past streams. 
Infinite Pixel TV is the brainchild of Mr. Paul Thomas Parnell. He's a filmmaker, a writer, and a special effects guy. You can find his films and FX videos on our content page, as well as his homebrew D20 campaign set in a post-apocalyptic Wild West. It's called Dust World. And our most recent newcomers to the network... Big ol' welcome to the kick-ass ladies of Plot Hunters. They are currently playing a Curse of Strahd campaign on Twitch. They stream on Wednesdays, and they are absolutely charming. Last but certainly not least, a monstrosity of a D&D campaign just got started here on Nerdsmith. Countless Heroes. It is a West Marches style campaign, which basically just means there's a ton of us. It is DM'd by none other than our illustrious Logan, and there are 16, count them, 16 players in this campaign, including all of us shenanigans and a number of folks from all over Nerdsmith. We've got Joe Collins from Dear DM and Aiden Chan of Dungeon Maestro for two. We currently stream five days a week, Tuesday through Saturday, with a different mix of party members every day. We are super proud of what we have managed to do in only the last couple weeks we've been streaming. You can find the game at Countless Heroes on Twitter, and find our in-character Twitter feeds, which are super fun, and we stream on Twitch every day that we play. Most importantly, if you like anything you see or hear on Nerdsmith, including us here at Shenanigans, please consider showing your appreciation. You can review our shows on iTunes. You can share with your friends, which is awesome. You could also consider becoming a Nerdsmith subscriber. And for helping support us in making our content each month, subscribers get some nifty perks and access to bonus content from our shows. So... Let's get back to the harrowing tightwire act our Miss Bonnie is about to attempt. Let's see if she can make some new friends, shall we? I... Blah. Alright, so the goal here is for Merrick to stealth into the cave as Bonnie walks into the cave? I... Merrick would stealth in a little bit in advance, and then Bonnie would enter once Merrick had made his way in. Yep. Kyle, you start to stealth in. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. 19. 19? All right. Bonnie doesn't know I exist right now. You stealthed your way out of the narrative. And then Bonnie will follow after trying to be um, confident. All right. Uh, so you uh, you kind of turn the corner, Bonnie, um, and you that's probably the first time you realize that Merrick seems to be able to see farther than you because you just see black. You don't see the people he was talking about. She'll just kind of make a note and still continue walking forward. Uh, Merrick, uh, the two don't seem to notice you. I assume you're trying to get behind them. Uh, yeah. Or are you just trying to go with Bonnie? I'm I'm more trying to like flank them and get to the side of them then actually go behind them and get around because I want to make sure that the rest of my party can get through as well sure Um, so yeah so they're kind of off onto the right hand side of the uh, of one of these larger boulders um, that uh, the more you look at the more you're pretty sure they've been placed here on purpose somehow but they are gigantic I mean you're not sure how uh, how they would do it they might be uh, some sort of underground giant maybe they used or uh maybe an earth elemental um because you're pretty sure some of these wouldn't even fit through the either doorway unless there's some other cavern you can't see or they just happen to have them here maybe uh again you don't know so uh so you're kind of sneaking around them logan as i'm walking i'd like to see if i can see any sort of signs of the rest of the party members um from the cleric uh, see if they're on the ground or anything around. If he was being chased with arrows, maybe I can spot them. Uh, you don't. You don't see anything like that here. Yeah. Uh, and so, as you start to walk forward, um, initially, just for a brief second, you start to hear the "Why do I, I hello, hello, do I, now you do I, as they start to kind of holler out at you. Uh, that's all that you end up hearing, Merrick. But Bonnie, the the comprehend language kind of kicks in. Uh, and and uh, you start to hear from the darkness 
uh, them speak. And Merrick, as you see them standing up and getting their bows ready, uh, have them trained on her as she starts to approach. So, Bonnie, you hear uh, you hear them say, "Who are you? Stop!" Um, she'll stop for a second, so because it shows that she understands them at least. Um, and she does look like them. Thank goodness. Uh, is it a language I recognize in general, or is it a different language? Mm, you do look like a drow. Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, all right. So, no, they do speak Elvish. They're actually speaking in Elvish. Uh, there is no uh, drow language. And because you are a, uh, a drow, as far as they can tell, uh, they would not be using undercommons. So, uh, yeah, so they, they, uh, they're they using Elvish. Awesome. Yeah. It is a weird dialect. There's a little a hu- heavy accent to it. Uh, that I will not attempt, but um, <laughs> they they do uh, they are speaking Elvish. So, America, if you speak Elvish, you understand what they're saying as well. Not a chance. And uh, as long as they're hollering a hundred feet away, the rest of you can hear it as well. I don't speak Elvish. Um, could I use my performance ability to answer in Elvish with the same kind of accent that they have? That's what it's there for. Excellent. Yay, expertise in performance. Um, so you you extrapolate. <laughs> yeah. She'll say, uh, my name is Reed. Where are you from, Reed? What's it to you? Further up in the cavern. Uh, approach. So she will. Merrick is, has his bow out, just in case. And Bonnie has the one hand slightly uh, at her side, but easily enough to go behind her back if she needs to do sparks. You come within 60 feet, you do end up starting to see them at the edge of the vision. They have their weapons drawn, uh, the bows are at the ready, but not pointed at you. Um, and then uh, one of them jumps down and comes over, kind of is looking you mm-hmm. up and down at what you're wearing, and says, where do you hail from? Having seen the map a lot, she's going to pick a random place on the map. I'm in the map. I'm in the map. That's I'm a bit map. away. Uh, from outside of Smushton. Um, yes. The caverns with the with the Etten. Yes, it's you. You live with the Etten. No, I, I live in that area, but not with the Etten. That is very close. We've never heard of any of our kind there. I've been traveling for some time. I. Um, Traveling from where? The, s- the surface, trying to get back home. That's horrible. Uh, why, why would you ever want to be there? I didn't have a choice in the matter. I was taken up there as a child. From where? Beneath Ashner's Tooth. You don't know the name of the city that you're from? I was very young, no. You have a strange look about you. But, um, welcome home. And they put their weapons away. Thank you. I had a group with me of, of non, El, uh, Non-dark elves. <laughs> she doesn't know. Did we learn the word drow at all? No. Nope. Or no? Yeah. Uh, non-dark elves that were helping me find my way here. He, like, cocks his head a little bit. But then your story is like, all right, okay. She doesn't know the lingo. Um, and he walks, he walks over and says, um, Reed, you, you are drow. That is what we are. Dark elf is a term that they came up for us. It makes sense. That's the only term I've ever heard. Those who are traveling with me have been kind. Um, Though they should be easy to kill. Oh, I would like to keep my word to them, if possible. Uh, They should just go. We should just just go. What What did you promise them? Passage in Returned for assisting me through the caverns. 
to get home. They're looking for something beyond uh, this place. Um, which place? She gestures to the, the, the archway. Oh, okay. Um, he, he, he nods. Oh, uh, what are they looking for exactly? Maybe we could speed them along. The, God, what was the name of the cavern? Um, cause she wouldn't say the actual thing. <laughs> They're looking for death's cavern. We don't know anything by that name here. We had a map. Let's see. Uh, she'll, what was the next closest thing? Where are your friends now? Just behind me. Um, <laughs> he like looks a little surprised. Like they stayed back. They were they were frightened of the man who was killed. Um, Why would they be frightened of a dead man? Well, they didn't know who was shooting arrows, and that is quite unsettling. When they so they were frightened of us, not the dead man themselves. Yes. Sorry, poor phrasing on my part. Um, understandable. You grew up with the inferior version of our language. Very true. Did you ever give me that performance check? No, but I can do it right now if you'd like. Do you still want to, even though this is the 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 lie you've come down to? I'd like to keep performing the lie at least. <laughs> no, no, I'm not worried about the lie. I'm worried about the accent, though. I'm Maybe like, she's trying to perfect her language as she talks to them. <laughs> like, oh, that's how you say that's don't. Fine. And <laughs> yeah, she's trying to to. Sure. Properly learn. Go ahead, give me a performance check. Ooh, 18. Um, as you guys are continuing to speak, he says, you're, you're picking it up very well, though. Thank you. Um, I've been told I learned quickly. Well, compared to those above, I'm sure you do. <laughs> what was the name of the place? Hang on, let me look at my notes real quick. I'm trying to think of the name of the place that was just before Death's Cavern, but not actually Death's Cavern. Whatever is beyond this archway is Death's Cavern. Or at least the gateway to Death's Cavern. Whatever that is on the map. Um, you don't see the passageway that would lead over to uh, the Durgar area yet. So you know you're not past that sort of maze-like passage, but you're close. And the, the X is within Death's Cavern. And she'll smile. I know that it was past a place that went to Durgar. Um, it was past there that they needed to go. I don't know what the term used. Fernholm. The, the Durgar city is Fernholm. Oh, thank you. Fernholm. It's past that. It's past Fernholm? Not through. Correct. Not through, but past. The labyrinth. Fucking hell. Yes. It looked like a maze. Yes. The labyrinth is, is the first line of defense to protect our home. Ah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. It's very different seeing it all in person than on paper. Of course. You'll have to forgive me for not knowing... As much as I should. There's no need to forgive. You found your way home. So what is it they wish past the labyrinth? There is, a, I guess, some sort of treasure that they're looking for. All right. We can take all of you beyond the cavern, if that's what you've promised them. Or past the labyrinth. It is. It is, and, and I would greatly appreciate that. All right. Um, I would suggest that once we leave the labyrinth, uh, you say goodbye to them and we go on to Jalamir. We could do that. If it's all right with you, I'll go ahead and let them know. Please. I'll be right back. And they, they kind of go off and start talking amongst themselves. Uh, as, she, as she turns around where they can't see, she does two little sparks in front of her, like, we're cool. Um, and then comes back and, and quickly fills you guys in on the story. Good job. Uh, yeah, it's a good job. But are we sure we can trust them? They might just kill us. Or try to. 
Um, no, I'm not sure we can trust them, but it's better than trying to fight our way through a city of drow. Um, after listening to what you've described, um, I believe that we should hide our pins so that we are not associated with the previous people that came through. Agreed. I agree. Sure. I tuck it under my armor. Uh, Adelaide will pin it on the inside of her um, shirt. Like, have it secure so it doesn't fall out anywhere, yeah. but but have it hidden. Did anyone see Merrick so we can let him know what the plan was? He, he, whoever sees Merrick. That's true. He would have seen the sparks. True. I just would hate to have him get caught up in the hiding and then them thinking that he's doing something ill-advised. He, he will see us approach and uh, probably, hopefully, follow in order. Okay. Uh, I guess best best to refer to me as Reed for a while. All right. It's my last name, so it's not too hard to remember for me, at least. Can would, do. Bonnie, if... Would we know your first name? Bonnie, if they want you to go home with them, do we just deal with that when we get to that point? Because, I mean, I'm I'm all for having them lead us, but I don't think this ends well if you decide to stay. Oh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't st- at all end well if I decide to stay. I think that's a, that's a, we come across that bridge when we can't get there. Hopefully we'll be enough so, away that we only have to deal with two of them instead of a city full. That's, that's what I was, yeah, that's when we get to it then. Yeah. Um, and I can keep this up for a while. I just might need to take a, a, a little break um, every hour or so to make sure it stays. Good. Um, it, it, it looks good. You did a good job. Um, Thanks. Um, at least we'll get through the labyrinth. <sighs> oh, there's a labyrinth too? Mm-hmm. Ugh, I'm not good at mazes. Yeah, they said they'd lead us through it, so. We should go. Better for help than of people who've lived here a long time. They don't seem particularly like they think much of surface folk. No. We'll just have to be on our best behavior then. Well, let's go. All right, let's uh, let's go. So Bonnie will refresh her disguise self real quick before they head back out. Okay. Adelaide will tuck that um, that drow arrow into like in the middle of her quiver, so it's sort of meshed in there, um, and will just hold her bow, but won't have it drawn because she doesn't want to look. Like she's ready for a fight. You mean like Val, who has a scythe, a warhammer, a mace, a crossbow? Yeah, like that. <laughs> so we'll follow Reed then. And uh, Reed will start walking back, remembering Merrick's uh, comment that confidence is, is king and keeping her head up and like, yes, I belong here. And to move forward. All right, as you guys come forward, the, uh, the two drow... Um, Put their hands on their on their um, swords and uh, just kind of watch uh, as you guys approach. Um, is it common? Have we seen people put their hands up? Sure. Adelaide will have at least her offhand raised just at her side so that they know she's not holding an arrow. Mine aren't like above my head or anything, but I'm just kind of like showing my that I'm I don't have a weapon. Yeah, Val would be doing the same. Brandishing her warhammer. <laughs> Look, I'm not armed. <laughs> um, so they they speak to each other a couple times in this language that nobody understands uh, except Bonnie. They they're basically talking about who they look like is the most threatening. Um, they're saying that uh, that they think that Adelaide uh, is is the uh, uh, the their long range support. So before she disappears, it's best to take her down, uh, and then. Um, Val is the caster, right? She's a cleric, uh, but she's wearing armor and carrying a shit ton of weapons. Do you have your holy symbol uh, out? Um. Well, she's like her belt has a holy symbol on it, basically. Got it. So, yeah. So they would be talking about the holy symbol specifically. Um, those two things. Uh, uh, Arthur, they seem to ignore um, being uh, the, a human. He, they're not. Uh, they're not too keen on. They don't see him as a threat. 
I wouldn't be able to hit him anyway. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I getting the gist? Like, they're going to take us, and then you're—they're going to kill them, or just no? They're just—they're just talking about if something happens, that that this is who that they they they're prioritizing targets, um, and and just creating a plan. Now they see in you. Got it. I'm kind of glancing around okay. um, to see as I walk. You know, just not staring, but I'm trying to see if I can find Merrick. It's a 19. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, they didn't see him, so. I have to roll a natural 20 to see you. I do not. Adelaide's going to have a lot of trouble not watching the drow, um, but if they, they notice she's looking, she's going to sort of like break eye contact, like sort of avoid making eye contact with them, but she's going to have a lot of trouble not looking at them. Okay. All right, read. And they're speaking Elvish, so anybody who speaks Elvish can uh, well understand them. All right, Reed, let's be on our way. Am I the only one who speaks Elvish? I do. Arthur okay. speaks um, Elvish, Dwarvish, Common, and possibly Human. So that's Smarty Pants. Uh, so they head over to this archway, and they walk through. Uh, one of them walks through the archway while the other one waits for the rest of you to go through. And then we'll, uh, we'll go through after the last of you, except for Merrick, who I assume is going to continue to sneak behind everyone. As you come into uh, this this section, you can kind of see that it seems like the uh, you're in what almost looks like dried mud. Like if you were to shrink down to the size of an ant and be in a gigantic dried mud puddle where it's all cracked and 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 crinkled, and it looks like you're in that just huge sheer cliffs uh, and things. Um, and uh, it's probably about 60, 70 feet up. Uh, brittle dry packed mud walls like clay almost um seem fairly sturdy but you could definitely dig through it fairly easily uh you could probably cause a pretty bad thing if you did though too so you guys they start to lead you through one behind one in front of you and one behind you and they start to lead you through this uh through this this catacombs these uh this labyrinth of of um of dried mud and after about uh, about half an hour they don't say anything really um, after about half an hour, they uh, you're, you're getting the idea that uh, that they, they just know this place extremely well. There are you can't really see any marks or anything that you can discern. Uh, they probably just know this place really well. Um, as we're going, could I be making marks with some like chalk? You could just make marks in the wall. It is th- that dry. Um, so yeah, perfect. Something oddly comforting about Merrick not being around, like knowing he's somewhere in the shadow. <laughs> um, I'd be making the marks in Thieves Camp. Sure. Mm-hmm. So that way it's a little bit harder to decipher. All right. Excellent. If they are amenable to it, um, Bonnie will kind of ask questions um, about, you know, what she should expect, um, is if there's anything that she should know now that she's returned home kind of thing is there something you know i've dealt with surface dwellers is there is there something i should know or you know that kind of thing um well expect that life will be very different for you i assume so um we don't have the luxuries that you might have up the pampering that you may have had um you will be put to work probably um unless you have some innate skill with divine magic then uh, you may join the priestesshood. Divine, no. Arcane, yes. You may still gain some uh, accolades then, but uh, know that you can never be part of the uh, the upper caste without knowing divine magic. That's all, mine. That's all right. I don't, I'm not too worried about being high up, I guess. They both kind of roll their eyes and, and look, just give each other glances. Um, I'm missing something, aren't I? As a woman, uh, you have the opportunity to join the upper castes. We do not. Oh, um, that seems strange. So to give up the uh, the opportunity so nonchalantly uh, is difficult for us to understand. I, I didn't know. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, of course you didn't know. You were raised by surface people 
And uh, so they continue to walk and they answer some questions. If anybody's curious about why they go through these catacombs instead of going up top, they mention that there are creatures up top. Uh, and every once in a while, you'll hear things kind of flying and skittering in the darkness above you, um, but uh, nothing that you ever see. They say that this is just the safer place to be. Good to know. Uh, that being said, um, after about another half an hour, uh, they say, uh, we're we are a little over halfway there, but it starts to get dangerous here. Uh, everyone be ready, uh, but don't attack unless we do. Noted. Normally we would uh, move silently through these halls, but, well, some of you can't. Probably staring right at Val. <laughs> they don't stare at anybody. They're they're speaking they're speaking Elvish at this point while they're saying all this. Correct. Okay. Bonnie is translating. Okay. And as they start to they start to move slower and kind of quieter, uh, and they have you guys stay back a couple times, uh, and they kind of go around corners, or one of them goes around a corner and just checks things out before they move forward. And occasionally they they have you go a different direction. Uh, they seem to be very on edge. Uh, at this point. Okay. Um, whenever Bonnie translated that we were going into a dangerous section, Val would have asked if she should get a weapon out just in case. They said to be ready to attack, but not to uh, but not to attack unless they do. Okay. She'll uh, pull out her, her scythe and have it ready. So uh, as you, as they, one particular point, they stop at this kind of crack uh, hallway ish thing like they all are and uh, they have you stop and then all of a sudden they have you rush really quickly they don't care about the noise but they just want you to move quickly and you do uh, and then the last of them follows you guys and uh, they kind of continue around the corner Merrick make me a perception check as you reach that same intersection that is a 19 on the die so 21 um, you uh, you catch a glimpse of something that they may have been trying to avoid um, about 70, 80 feet away. Uh, it is uh, it's about four feet across. Uh, it has this, uh, this kind of bulbous sort of top. It kind of goes down into almost like a mouth-like feature. Uh, and it has several of these tendrils sort of coming off of it, um, ending in eyeballs, as it then kind of just floats sideways I will, I will scamper in the same direction that they're going are you still happy with your 19 or do you want to re-roll why would i be able to re-roll well i mean you've had the opportunity because you've been moving a lot normally sometimes i might force a re-roll but and i i don't i'm giving you the opportunity you can either keep the 19 or you can uh, give me a new stealth check at this point oh um I rolled a 12 last time, uh, so it's my, my best skill. So let me reroll. Go for it. I got an 18. Okay. Okay. All right. So you do, 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 and uh, you're continuing behind them. Um, after, a, uh, after about another hmm, maybe two to three minutes, uh, Merrick, you feel a presence behind you. Um, and you're, you're stealthy and you're kind of like hiding, but you look back and you see this, this orb thing now with, uh, with its one gigantic eye, uh, and sort of this kind of muscular surrounding it and the skin kind of just folding around the eye. Um, it is following you and, uh, you're pretty sure it can see you. No. Is it? Uh, okay. I will attempt to move a little bit faster. And keep an eye on it. Oh, um, um, and the uh, the musculature that's kind of around the eye has several small eyes as well. Oh, god! Has it has uh, it made it is like speeding up to try to catch up to me? Um, is it? It doesn't seem to be. It just seems to be kind of going fairly. Uh, it's normal ten feet around or so. So, uh, but. The other group is not going much faster. So you go much farther, you either have to split off from them or you have to uh, catch up with them. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna try to stay close to my group. Okay. Uh, so you're, how close are you going to try to get to your group? Like within visual, 20, 30 feet, and still stay hidden? Yes. Okay. 
Okay, some scouts these guys are. Um, all right, so anybody with a, a passive of 18 or higher? I, I doubt it at this level. Nope. Fucking uh, Rio in another game has a 19 at this level. So, um, uh, all right, so you guys, nobody sees Merrick, um, even though he's like right behind you, like just like in the mud. Uh, mm-hmm. But one of the drow do stop and kind of whisper something or make a, a little bit of a noise. Like, whoosh, and it just kind of echoes kind of through the the thing um, in a very interesting pattern. And the other one turns like sharply and readies his weapon. And as you kind of turn back, um, you start to see the the uh, the one of these one of these eye tentacles kind of just peering around the corner uh, as the rest of it kind of comes over and it's looking down on the ground under this this, this kind of uh caked mud outcropping um and merrick you see it about 15 feet behind you as it comes around this corner as you're kind of protected by this outcropping um and it's it's staring at you so you're not kind of stuck between the two groups anybody do anything uh adelaide looks to bonnie and says Read what's going on. Arthur's not going to attack unless the two drow attack, as he was told. Uh, uh, Bonnie pulls out her sword and says in Elvish, Do we attack it? Um, one of them, uh, one of them walks forward and, and just kind of puffs his chest out uh, and starts speaking in uh, in that guttural language that nobody understands. Um, and he says, uh, says, Goth, what do you want here? Not your territory. And the Goth just kind of floats forward and uh, stops right above Merrick. It's literally hovering <laughs> next to you and above you. Um, and one eye stalk is still like looking straight down at you. Stab. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, it says, uh, what I always want, meat or magic. And uh, he looks at us and says, Goth, you shall find neither here. We outnumber you. Leave. And it, it just kind of shakes. It just kind of hovers side to side, like it's shaking its head. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and just kind of grins down. You know my power. I shall kill you all, especially your friend here. And uh, they're, they're like looking around trying to understand what he's talking about. Uh, no clue. Bonnie's like, oh, I know where Merrick is now. <laughs> we found him. One of the eye stalks twists around and a, uh, a kind of bluish green beam, well, a gray and gray beam shoots out and pushes the mud flap, uh, the mud flap, the mud outcropping just down to the ground, just crumbles it, and Merrick is revealed. And the, the, the drow kind of looked to Bonnie. Yep, yeah, that's one of mine. I thought we lost him. You're alive? Hooray! <laughs> you can't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> they looked very pissed with Bonnie. You'll have to tell us all about it. It was a bit touch and go there in the insect cabin, but, you know. All right, Goth. We made deal. And he, they turn to you and say, who the hell is that? That's Merrick. Why was he not with us? <laughs> Merrick's talents lend very well to being quiet and in the shadows, but apparently not quiet enough. And to be fair, he is very small and rather afraid. The goth is going to need some sort of bargain, or he will attack us. And we are not fighting or dying for the likes of you, no matter who you are or where you're from. I understand. I would not ask you to do such a thing. What kind of magic does he want? You understood him? Yes. Interesting. And any magical item should do. Depends on how powerful they are. 
He is very formidable. I do not wish him, I do not wish to fight. So if your offering is not good enough, we will leave you here. Uh, Bonnie would translate. I understood it, but I'm still playing dumb. Like I'm trying to not let them know that I know Elvish. We've got the scroll. Oh, wrong accent. God damn it. So many games. <laughs> um, we've got the scrolls, Reed. We could try one of those. Yeah. We could add it. It's a spell I already have, so. Just throw some paper at him. Make it rain. And she'll turn to the, the drought. I have, we have some magical scrolls that we can offer him. Um, does he speak... Elvish as well, or does he only speak the other language? He only speaks Undercommon. How you understand Undercommon, we'll have to discuss later. I did say that I have affinity with arcane magics. So you did. I will translate for you. Thank you. There, now you can talk to the beast without me having to do two voices twice. Um... We have several scrolls that are magical with that. Address him by name. Goth, we have several scrolls that are magical. Would that be an acceptable offering for passage? Possibly. Lay your offering here, and I shall accept or deny. Bonnie will grab the scroll of Chill Touch from out of her bag. And look at Val and go, this is the only magical thing I have. If you have anything else we can add. Yeah, just give me a second. I'm going through my bag. And she'll pull out she'll pull out the other scrolls we just got. We don't have any of the dark vision ones ones left, obviously. I'm gonna hold on to the scroll of daylight. Cause I feel like that might be really important down here at some point. I can cast bless, so she'll pull those two out. And um I think Bonnie and I have access to Lesser Restoration. I don't at this level. You might. Val, don't lay all the cards on the table. Have a, have a place to, to raise your offer. I know that we have more than one. She, she'll rifle through and she'll pull out the two scrolls of Bless and hand those to Bonnie. Bonnie will nod. In Goth, we have three magical scrolls here. And we'll lay them in front of him. Is your offering complete? And as he translates for you, he says, be warned, you may only get one chance. Maybe this is the time to raise. He's quick to anger. Val, how many scrolls of lesser do we have? We've got two, and we've got two of the Remove Poison, and we've got the Scroll of Daylight. I've got some beef jerky. Why don't we put one of the lessers out? Okay. And one of the and one of the poisons too. Two more. Oh, protection from poison. That's what they're called. Sorry. All right. So she'll pull, she'll pull one of each out and hand them to Bonnie. It is now complete. Goth. So you put in two blasts. Chill Touch is a cantrip, right? A protection from poison, and then lesser. So he uh, he comes down, and he just starts to to lick it up and use his tentacles. And you're, this time you kind of notice he has, he has two extra tentacles that are kind of rolled over his body, uh, and these are very squid-like. Um, and then he kind of just picks them up and starts shoving them into his mouth. Gross. And uh, he looks over at you and says, This will do for today. Great. If you come this way again, bring more offerings. And it turns and starts floating away. Actually, just starts floating backwards. And Bonnie will offer a hand to Merrick to help him up out of the mud. I mean, well, you all are in the mud right now, but yeah. He'll take the hand anyway. All right. Welcome back. I thought it was a goner for a minute there. He was following me for a good, you know, 10 minutes or so. Okay. Let's... <laughs> it's over. You led it right to us. Yeah, Bonnie is translating. No, I was following you and, you know, if, if 
it followed me. So it's not like I was leading it to you. Uh, I would have led it to uh, here with where uh, we were ending up. So technically you led it to you because you were leading and I was following. So Bonnie's translating back. Yeah, Bonnie will translate back, although she might couch it in slightly nicer terms. That's what, I, that's what I was looking for. He says he's very sorry. It was a mistake, and it will not ever happen again. <laughs> 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 he was just trying to catch up to us and didn't realize, and he's very sorry. Was he trying to catch up, or was he sneaking behind us? He's got very short little legs. <laughs> Sometimes we get a bit ahead of him. Is there anything else you wish to mislead us about? Completely unintentional. My my apologies. They kind of look at each other. They're they're wanting to speak, but they're not. Um, obviously, since now you understand other comments, they realize that. Shouldn't have let that go. Shit. So they uh, they go ahead and they they guide you the rest of the way, um, and you guys come out on the other side of this kind of cavernous thing, uh, up on the top of a hill. It seems like it's this hill of this kind of dirt mud stuff, um, and you see all these sort of little uh, like uh, very strange. They're like underground uh, succulent type plants, but they're not necessarily water it's just some sort of mossy kind of growth out of this uh, uh out of this mud on the sides where it's more open into the cavern um not sure why it doesn't seem to grow anywhere else but there's a path that kind of winds down this hill uh, but as you're standing on this hill you're looking you can see the the road uh or this this path kind of guide over some more of this dirt and mud um as it leads up to um, um, some sort of uh, city. And there's a very hint of a natural light within this cavern, which allows you to kind of see the city up ahead. And it is gorgeous. It is, uh, um, it is as, as beautiful as any city you've ever seen, uh, even though you can only just barely see it. Um, just uh, there are some, some lights. They have some twinkling lights in, in the distance. Uh, and uh, although you're not sure they use it for the same purpose, maybe they're more of a, uh, symbology and things like that. Um, they don't necessarily need it to see. Uh, and, uh, and that's that. Oh my God. It's, it's beautiful. It definitely looks beautiful from a distance. I had no idea this was all down here. You would guess it's probably, uh, maybe 1200 to 1500 residents could even be as high as 2000 if there's more underground, but there's several towers, but it's fairly small footprint. But there's a lot of height to it. Um, and you see lots of stairs and things kind of guiding and a lot of uh, balconies and things. Um, slightly gothic kind of a hint to it. And the, one of the walks up says, Reed, it's time to go. Uh, which way do they need to go from here? There's only one thing beyond the labyrinth. I didn't see the road to front home anywhere. Did we pass it? We didn't take you to the road to front home. Beyond the labyrinth, this direction, there is only one thing. And they raise their weapons and turn towards the rest of the group. Dust off your dice and hold on to your butts. Do you love magic, mystery, intrigue, and romance? Of course you do. Meet Rowan, the enigmatic bard. Atlas, the blacksmith, what a heart of gold. Kristoff, the sorcerer who enchants with both fact and fiction. Join our heroes as they unmake the best laid plans of their indomitable DM in The, the Lawful Stupid. Stupid.